when I wrote this book, I decided to make a list of all the difficult people I had encountered. And interestingly, I came up with 25, which is kind of a nice number to work with. And uh, then I thought, well, now I need to rank them. You know, we like rankings, college football, college basketball, the top 25 or whatever. So these are the top 25 most difficult people in, in any church. And so then the task of, of figuring out who's the worst, you know, faces me. And so I just made out a list based on my experience, 46 years in ministry. And so the first section from 25 down to number 16, I call those people the difficult. And they're not going to destroy your church. They're not going to destroy your ministry, but they are going to get on your nerves. These are people who can be annoying, frustrating, just just difficult uh, um, uh, people. Then the second group from 15 down to number nine, these are people are what I call the dangerous. And you can keep these people under control if you deal with them properly. They do have potential to harm the church. That's why I call them dangerous. But they're probably not going to destroy the church, and especially if, as a leadership team, you handle them well. Then the last group, from there down to number one, I call them the deadly. These are the people that will destroy your church. And we've all heard about churches that have split We've heard about churches that have uh, closed their doors. We've heard about churches that maybe run in six, seven hundred, and all of a sudden they're running two to three hundred because of something just blew up in the church, and you know lots of people left. We hear those stories, and and th that's where those incidents come from from this group of people who I think are really deadly to the to the body of Christ. And so we work from twenty five down to number one. And um, it gets, it gets, the book gets darker as you go because we're talking about more and more serious problems the deeper we get into the book. If a person's watching, and we, we've heard this a lot, we have our 24 hour prayer line and we hear this from people when they call and they're like, where do I go to church? And we can recommend churches to them, but some people say it a little bit differently. They were like, well, I was hurt in a church and I don't, what if you were hurt in a church? someone watching right now that is struggling for fellowship, we need it. We need fellowship. We need that, that church and we need the word of God fed to us. What should they do? Well, I think people choose churches much too casually. A lot of times we choose a church based purely on location, how beautiful the building is, whether they have sports teams that we can play on, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Issues that really aren't that important in the grand scheme of things. I believe that before you choose to go to any church, you ought to attend for a while, see how it feels, the worship and all that kind of thing. And then I think you need to have some good conversations with some of the leaders of that church and ask some hard questions. Um, I, I would never, I don't think I would ever start attending a church without sitting down and having a conversation with the pastor. Mm. I mean, I might attend for a few weeks to see just kind of on the surface how it feels. But if I felt like I was ready to make a commitment to that church, I would want to have a conversation with the pastor. I might even want to have a, a conversation with some of the elders because it's important to know before you commit, before you dive in, it's important to know um, the health of that church and health and attendance are two different things mm. you know so often we judge churches purely on the size and we think well if there's that many people going to that church it must be a great church oh boy no 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 not necessarily big churches can have major dysfunctions just like smaller churches can and so I would, I would, instead of just looking at how beautiful the building is and how close it is to my house and, and things like that, I would really want to know uh, about the health of the church. What kind of problems are going on there? What are, the, what are the issues? Has the church historically been a troubled church? Has it ever split before? You know, and, and why did those things happen? I believe those are really important questions. And of course... We always forget this one. Does this church teach the truth? Mm -hmm. 
does this church preach the Bible? And I'm sorry to say that some don't. No, they preach parts of the Bible, but they don't preach the whole counsel of God. Right. And so I think that's a really important question as well. But investigate, just like you would if you were going to pick a new doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, find out if the doctor has a great reputation. Find out if he's a guy you can trust. And has he helped people? Uh, these are important issues. Yes. Uh, Mark, it is such a good conversation. I can tell you've had, you've had the experience and you've certainly got the wisdom. The book is called Troublemakers in the Church, Dealing with the Difficult, the Dangerous, and the Deadly. Pastor Mark Atterbury, thank you so much for being with us today. It's a real privilege. Thank you for asking me.